Okay, let's go ahead and continue into some of the specific experiences. For the time being, I'm going to look at this experience from the eye of the end user. So when a project manager, the most common user of this platform, or a manager or supervisor of projects comes in, they're normally going to land on a page that basically looks like this. This is the home page. They're going to have this URL probably saved somewhere as a favorite, something along those lines, and they will just come directly to this page. From here, most of the time, if they are just a project manager, um, they're going to pay attention to uh, either the approvals or the projects. They'll see these two tiles. And these two tiles make direct re reference to the same things you see on the left-hand side. So approvals one pending, that is referring to the my approvals. Projects is referring to projects in the left-hand navigation. So let's go ahead and jump into the first tile. We won't worry too much about the other two tiles for the time being. Okay, so as we see, a couple things have changed on the screen. Number one, the middle section, the body area, is now filled with a view from something called the Project Center. So our top navigation has changed, our page uh, title has changed, and the user experience in the middle of the page has changed. Now, speaking of top navigation, we mentioned the ribbon. Now that we're on a page that has other context associated with it, we have a different ribbon. The ribbon is no longer just browse, the ribbon now contains projects. And this allows us to do a lot of things. We can add new projects. We can open a specific project that we have highlighted on our body experience. We can build a team against a project that we have highlighted on our body experience. We can do specific permissioning for the project so that users who are not part of the project team may be able to have access to information in the project. We can check in the projects that we are personally responsible for. So take us to a different page so that we can see the projects that we have checked out. And I'll explain what the idea of checking out means shortly. We can also zoom in, zoom out to see, you know, different levels of time detail. So this zoom is not the page. This zoom is actually related to the timeline that we see over in the body section. We can scroll to a particular project. So if we have a project and this timeline is not visible for whatever reason, let's say that we were um, somewhere over, uh, let me get that out of the way. I'm gonna move it. Okay, let's say that we were looking at this project and uh, for instance, we had, I don't know, uh, zoomed in so that we were seeing um, a different time granularity. Now, because we're looking at a different time granularity, the scroll uh, icon at the bottom of the screen is now visible, and we we move the scroll uh, a certain distance to the left or the right, we'll have moved to the point where the project that we currently have highlighted is no longer visible on the timeline. So scroll to project, I click that, it takes us to the beginning of that project's timeline. Looking further to the right, we see data. So what does that mean? Well, data means what are we going to show in this view down below? Data references the views that we choose. So we have a lot of different views up in the top in our dropdown. Each of these views will change the information that is contained in this middle section. So I'm going to change to project status. Great, I see a slightly different view. There are some similar uh, icons, but now we see cost baseline start and finish. If I change back to project tracking, I see categories, so there's some additional fields there. If I look for executive oversight, now I'm looking at proposed budget. So as you, as you can see, the view mostly affects where the center bar is, what level of detail we're looking for in our uh, matrix, and it may affect you know, what kinds of metrics and other things we're able to see. Right below that, we see a filter. A filter is going to reduce or increase the amount of information we see below. So we could filter by just things that are in the red. We could filter by just things that are over a certain dollar amount. If there is a field on our screen, we can use it as a filter. We cannot necessarily filter based on just any piece of data, but we can certainly filter on the basis of the columns that are visible within the view. Okay, right below that, we have the idea of grouping. 
Grouping again is based on, for the most part, the things that are in the view. So I see that I can group by project name, overall, schedule, costs, baseline costs, proposed budget, et cetera. One of the more useful things you might end up grouping by is like programs or portfolios, assuming that you have set these up in your system. And as you see, now it has aligned under a group header each of the projects within a particular portfolio. So there's the one that creates competitive advantage, those two of those, two that affect improving infrastructure, three, no, yep, three that affect providing information, one for reducing expenses, one for service. You also notice that when you do group by something, it can actually summarize some of the data that's below that, especially numeric data. So if we have like, you know, 125,000, 750,000, you see that that's added up to 875. Same goes for baseline costs and goes for cost. You can see that the budget variance is added up. So in fact, negative 42,000 budget variance in the one, positive 39,000 in the other leads to a total budget variance of negative 3,000. Um, and you can also see where the overall start and the overall finish is relative to all of the items that are in the grouping. Okay, cool. Now, a couple other things over off to the left, we have the ability to collapse and highlight things. So right now I have these groups, but I have them all expanded. I could say, I just wanna see level one and it would collapse everything into just the names of the portfolios. Uh, I could expand to level two and it would expand it right back out. If we had multiple levels of detail, like we were grouping by portfolio, then by a program, then by a project manager, we might have three or four different levels of detail and we can always go up or down uh, by using the outline selector. Uh, similarly, you can use or not have the roll up information. So the dollar amounts here, if I uncheck that, dollar amounts gone, you could check it back, all the places where there's an opportunity to roll up data, we get rolled up. You see that to the right, we have the Gantt bars, all of this timeline information. We can uncheck that if we don't wanna see it. Sometimes people just want to see the matrix. They don't really care about seeing specifically the timeline laid out in a visualization. So all of that is how we constrain and control what we see in our data presentment down in this uh, body section. Uh, slightly to the right of that, we see this thing that says timeline. Timeline is this thing that we see above the main body. It shows how we can add projects and add individual tasks to the timeline up above. This is mainly to communicate very important things. So for instance, maybe we're communicating the end of the quarter for the finance department and we want to communicate specific milestones that we have to meet. Or maybe we want to communicate really important things within the portfolio, like we're doing a major network modernization, it affects a lot of other things. We wanna keep high track on the things that are being affected. Okay, far to the right, we see that we can share things, we can print out what's in this, uh, this grid, we can export the content to Excel, so we have easy ways to take the data out and put it into other places if we wanna do more with it. We see farther to the right of that, showing and hiding time with date, so, if we look over here, we have a date. We want with time, without time. We can hide that or show it. And there's a concept of subprojects. We won't get into that at this moment, but we can have projects within projects. That's usually true when you have something bigger that you're working on. Finally, over to the right, we have um, change the project type. So projects often have a type. There are simple or small projects. There are medium sized projects. There are large sized projects. Often they have different requirements and different expectations that are placed upon the project managers and the people working on the projects. And last but not least, we see something called apps. So there is the ability within Project Online to use third-party apps, and we have one selected here called Bulk Edit. That's pretty much the ribbon up the top, and this gives you a decent sense of what exactly is in the information that you're seeing. There's a couple other notes that we wanna pay attention to in this experience, however. First things first, there's an indicator column and the indicator column has a set of icons in it. These icons relate to different things that we can do directly off of this line. So we could click on one icon to see the issues associated with the project. We could click on another icon to see the risks associated with this project. We click a third icon to open the project in Microsoft Project Online Desktop, which is what it's called at the moment, all desktop. 
Uh, it was previously called Project Professional. Uh, it's been called many things, but basically allows us to open the schedule involved in this project into the desktop software application, another, otherwise known as Project Professional, formerly Paul Desktop, Project Online Desktop currently. And one last thing that's not visible, there's actually an icon that you can also see sometimes that shows when you have documents also associated with the project. And that icon will sometimes show up in the indicator column for certain projects that have documents associated with them as well. Second thing that we want to pay attention to is there's an ellipsis to the right of the name of the project. The ellipsis allows us to see a few things, do a few things. We can directly open the project. It will do the same thing as if we click the name of the project. We can share it. We can go directly from here to the three issue, issues and the three risks. We can see at a glance what the current completion state is, who the owner is, when it was last published. And there's even a further ellipsis down there where we can jump down directly to the project site. So sometimes people want to do that when they want to get directly to work on documents and deliverables. We can also see that we have another place to do build team. I mentioned build team up in the navigate portion of the ribbon at the top of the screen previously. They do the exact same thing. And if I'm the project owner, I could potentially delete my project. It is two steps of navigation away. So the idea is generally people don't want to delete projects, but it is there if they need it. And finally, if we click on the link, which is underneath the title of the project, it will take us to project details. 